Hey, I have two really fun guitars I'm working on right now. One is for thee, one is for me. And uh, I'm gonna start telling you about them. Let's start with the first one, which is, um, uh, you remember the little mini nylon string guitar I made? I really like that design and I wanted to see how it would scale up into a full size nylon string acoustic guitar. And you know, I think acoustic nylon strings are gonna have a moment in a minute. I, I don't have any reason to think that, but I do think that. And so I thought I'd try to jump in on it. And uh, let's start with how far I am on that guitar. Since I hadn't made this guitar in this size yet, I of course had to create some molds, uh, which I just did on my laser using some quarter inch MDF. And um, it was pretty easy to do. I basically just upsized the, um, the original drawings I made of the mini until it was about the size of a normal guitar. But then I had to make a few tweaks to just, you know, bring it to scale and make it work right. And here you can see I lasered in some dowel holes so I could easily align my pieces and, uh, and make this now half inch thick mold for this uh, relatively thin instrument I'm going to build. It's only two inches thick. Uh, here I did my trick where I laser curved some reclaimed closet doors on the inside and started laying out uh, the best way to get these pieces in. And I'm, you know, there's some tight angles in here. You have to do some piecing. Uh, it's a little bit precarious, uh, and I'm still kind of figuring it out. It came out okay. I also cut on my laser a bunch of little tiny pieces of wood to add to the corners as well as the heel. Um, it was just faster and easier than trying to cut thick pieces of wood on the CNC that are that small. And then I glued them together and sanded them in. That created my my tail block heel rather, you know, and then um, also those little corners there you see where I have to add some support. However, I did cut my neck block on the CNC with the neck pocket. I'm still figuring out the best way to glue and clamp everything together. And uh, you know, next one will be easier. <laughs> but uh you know these these little corners are tricky to try to line it all up especially because i can't see both sides the way this mold is set up being flat on a table um and the, the you know the sides didn't come out perfect we'll talk a little bit about that later but i did get enough uh adhesion and strength out of it to make it work and here you can see the neck block uh cut out on the cnc in two parts where i glued together um one half has the neck pocket and then the other half has all the holes for making my sort of bolt-on adjustable neck template. Now this is a nylon string guitar so I didn't need to do a truss rod uh, which means that it was just a one-sided carve on my CNC out of this blank of a bunch of scrap wood I had glued up a while back uh, that I'm finally getting around to using. And then of course I had to make uh, my fingerboards which I also cut from some uh, local wood. On this one I used a little bit of um, black locust I had left over which is kind of cool because it glows under black lead a little bit. Uh, here's a quick little <laughs> commercial for my center square. Once again, I really use this thing all the time in, in various ways, and you can see I'm using my square tools to find the center of the headstock to laser etch the logo. This camera angle made me realize I really need to get in there and clean my laser. <laughs> I cut the logo a little bit deep on the laser and then filled it in with a little bit of epoxy. It's kind of a cool look, uh, makes it a little more permanent. And then of course I have all this other guitar making work. Again, it's like, you know, uh, people tend to think that when you have these lasers and CNCs, it takes a lot of woodworking away, but it really doesn't. Um, still most of my time is spent using traditional tools and doing traditional things, you know, pushing in frets with a fret press, which I just use my drill press, of course, uh, you know, applying finish, sanding by hand, there's still quite a bit of that. Um, all the important stuff is still really done by hand. What the laser does is just sort of the the rough stuff for you, you know, gets the, gets the rough cuts <laughs> ready for you. So I added my inserts for the neck adjustments and bolt on neck and glued the neck together. And now let's uh, hear a word from our sponsor, which is of course me. Hey, I don't know if you know this or not, but I don't put like commercials in the middle of my videos for like companies that I don't care about or products that you don't care about or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, my channel is made possible thanks to viewers like you who support me over on patreon.com slash Tim Sway, which I really appreciate. And uh, the other way of support is by people who actually buy the stuff that I make. Like I don't make videos for a living. I make things for a living. And you can find those things that I make over at newperspectivesmusic.com where I make guitar parts and accessories, as well as at squaretools.com where I make the tools that I build a lot of my guitars, parts and accessories with. And uh, weirdly enough, guineapigtanks.com if you happen to have a guinea pig. But um, on all three of those platforms, if you type in the code, I know Tim Sway, it'll save you 10% on everything. Good to know, right? All right, back to the show. 
Now with my uh, tail block and neck block in and all those little corner pieces in, I had everything pretty much lined up and ready to get some kerfing added. Of course, I have to add it to both sides. You know, a little bit of time consuming process, waiting a few hours in between shifts. And you can see how I designed this mold. I got wise and I designed it to have like a little bit of a, a run over so I could run these corners past each other, um, which will in theory help me in the final assembly. I was at a woodworking show in Massachusetts last year and there was a guy there selling these giant rolls of sandpaper and so I bought a couple of different uh, pieces. Some of it I cut up and some of it I just glued onto these sheets of aluminum board so I have flat surfaces for doing big sanding like this. It really comes in handy. Uh, this way I can get my edge all nice and smooth uh, and then ready for gluing a top on. But now let's talk about the top and the back. So here I just designed on the computer this rough template of what I thought my bracing should look like on the inside, but then in the real world I did something a little bit different. I put a little bit less of it, but I thought since I was making a nylon string guitar I would try to do some some fanned bracing instead of X bracing because that seems to be like the more traditional way. And of course my body shape is untraditional and I have the sound hole and these cutaways in different places so I had to design around that. But I started by gluing this massive center brace in and then working off of that. Um, and I'm using closet doors too, so it's plywood. It has a little bit more structural integrity than, you know, using straight wood. So I don't have to worry about grain seals or anything like that. And I just basically designed a, a fan brace that gave me no large gaps uh, unsupported because don't forget there'll be the frame of the guitar around the edge supporting it there too. I've mentioned this Go Deck in other videos, but in case you haven't seen it, this is my Cheater Go Deck. And I just bought these four foot tall um, garage like driveway markers that people put out when they're plowing and stuff along the edge of their driveway. They're fiberglass and they bend and what I did is I just put a solid piece of wood on my ceiling directly above where I'm working and I measured it all out to just being a little bit less than four feet and that way I get I can just push these these bars in and use them as clamps to apply even pressure along these pieces. It works really really well and it was super cheap. Like if you were to buy like a Godex system that's like hundreds and hundreds of dollars and it just does basically the same thing. And I'm sure there's some advantages to it that my <laughs> pushing rods up against the ceiling uh, lacks, but this works fine for me. Uh, you know, I have the shape and the bracing, of course, and, uh, and also brace up the back before I can start gluing the top and back on. I glued the back on first and I used weight instead of um, clamps to, to hold that on. I do that often so I can keep it in the mold and then once the back is on, the, the shape's a little more firm and I can take it out of the mold and glue on the top but, and use clamps. But uh, it just occurred to me now as I'm recording this voiceover, I could use my Go Deck to do this. I have a little bit of this uh, Total Boat blue uh, elixir paint left over and I thought it'd be kind of cool to just paint inside the sound hole. So I painted as far as the eye could see and I didn't worry about painting anywhere else. I also used weight instead of clamps or my go deck as I'm learning as I talk instead of uh, the clamps because the clamps are being used on another instrument which we'll be talking about next week. If you're familiar with my work, you know that I basically made a career out of just reclaiming old, like, hollow core doors. <laughs> that's like almost all I use nowadays. Uh, and that started several years ago. There's a million videos I've done about these doors. If you don't know what they are, they're the doors that are, they're just sort of flat on the outside and they're hollow on the inside. And if you, you kind of, slam a piece of furniture into it or something you'll put a hole right through it they're all cardboard stuffed in it it's, you know like i said go watch my videos but so um i just wanted to do a little update on them there's basically what i found in my years of doing this in, at least in my region of new england connecticut there's um basically three types of closet doors and the, the most prominent and popular one are the luan luan is a, a imported hardwood uh you can see if if this will focus on that that there's two very thin layers of like a veneer on the top of it. And then there's a third core, uh, which is usually also just Luan, it's just facing the other direction. Um, and uh, you'll see them in, you know, various finishes, but you can tell it's Luan because it's really stringy and grainy looking, it has a kind of a mahogany color. Sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll get like a real veneer of something really nice 
on top of a door, but the inside of those is different. You'll see this is um, like, it's tough to tell here. On this one, you'll see this is like a birch or a maple. I'm not sure. Um, and this one is maple on the top too. And so this is the other kind. So you have like the Luan, you'll have like a birch or maple. I'm not quite sure which. And then you'll have like a, either a Luan or a birch or maple with a prettier veneer on top. And usually those are the higher quality wood. This stuff is wicked strong, a tiny bit thicker than this and um and really really pretty um but you do have to worry about burning through veneers sometimes and uh they all kind of work basically the same as being eighth inch plywood except for <laughs> when you're trying to work with the luan um because it's so stringy and flaky you get a lot of stuff like this that starts to happen and um especially when you're doing the stuff like the bending but this will even happen when you're just doing straight cuts it chips away real easy and um so you can see on this uh like these seams i left open because my plan was to go cut in and do like an inlay to fill those in but then you can see in these other spots where um i just had luan doing what luan does uh there's a couple spots like that around here there's another one over here and um you know I kind of expected it to happen. Sometimes sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But so what I'm gonna do with this instrument is, um, because I have so many of them, is I'm actually just gonna use five minute epoxy. I'm gonna fill this whole side in, all these gaps, all these holes and everything with five minute epoxy, sand it all down, and then paint the sides and back of this guitar. So now another thing you'll know is if you're a long time watcher of my channel, I rarely paint. And when I do, it's usually not very good. So keep your expectations low. <laughs> I thought about using like Bondo or wood filler or something to just kind of skim coat the whole thing, but I thought this might be a little bit stronger because I, I don't want that Luan underneath there to, to want to peel up again. So this will kind of glue it together and, and sand it down. And, you know, I just don't, I don't have the patience for this kind of work. <laughs> so, uh, and I, you know, I did, I did an okay job on that, but I got it all fairly smooth. And then I went and I put a little bit of shellac on the top before taping it off to help prevent some bleed. Um, so I could spray uh, the back and sides and um, since I put a little bit of that blue on the inside hole that seemed like the right color to use but first I used some um, sandable filler primer uh, to help kind of even that out a little better and and again like I said I'm just not I'm not good at this so it, it's okay you know from a distance it looks fine but when you get up close you start to see uh, some imperfections in the finish Let's leave that there for now. That guitar is not done yet. Should be done pretty soon, and I'll let you see how that turns out. Uh, in the next video I post, I'm going to show you this other kind of cool guitar I'm making. And this one I'm making for myself, and it's also not done yet either. So I'll see you next time, and then we'll, uh, you know, we'll wrap them all up. All right, be good.